Uh, I'd like for you to turn with me into the book of uh, 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. And uh, I want to read uh, a few scriptures here that just come on my mind just a few minutes ago, but uh, still yet the same subject, but I wanted to read these scriptures. Uh, in the, uh, 2 Kings, the 6th chapter, and beginning at verse 8, the Bible says that uh, before I start, uh, Sister Sharon lost a, a sister, a sister passed this week, and uh, a dear saint of God, and uh, Murray graduated with her in school, and uh, just just keep them in prayer. They're going they're going through some things. So, uh, in the sixth chapter of Second Kings, beginning at verse eight, the Bible says, "Then the king of Syria warred against Israel, and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp.' And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, and said, Beware." that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there, not once or twice, but, uh, you know, many times by him listening to the man of God, uh, he was saved. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not shew me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he's in Dothan. Therefore sent the, thither the horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his master said, How shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And he opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Let me read that last verse again. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots afar about, round about, Elisha. Let's everybody bow our heads and let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you, oh, Father. We thank you that you have permitted us to come here this morning and worship you. The Lord, it's just a privilege to be in your presence and to be able to come and glorify you and worship you. And I pray that you would anoint the word of God. Let your word have free course and be glorified. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to speak this morning on a thought like this. God 
surrounds us. How many knows that you're surrounded by God? How wonderful it is to know that God has surrounded us, that you and I, uh, we're, we're special to God, whether you feel like you're special or not, but God uh, just uh, surrounds us. And here in the Word of God, the Syrians warred against Israel. And as they were warring against Israel, the man of God, uh, Elisha, God would tell him things that uh, the king of Syria uh, uh, planned, uh, told uh, Elisha where the king of Syria and his army had camped out. So every time God would reveal to this man of God uh, where the enemy was at, the man of God would go to the king of Israel and says, now make sure you don't go by this place because there's where the enemy is set up and uh, waiting for you. And the Bible says that uh, Elisha saved the king of Israel and his, his army not once or twice, but many times saved him. And the king of Syria got to notice and everywhere I set my ambush, uh, uh, set up an ambush, they know where we're at. And said, uh, he began to talk to his counselors, tell us who uh, Manu is spying for the king of Israel because every place that we set up ambush, they know it. And one of the counselors began to uh, tell the king of Syria, said, we're all uh, faithful to you. We're not spies. We're not telling the king of Israel. But there's a prophet in Israel by the name of Elisha, and uh, God tells him things <laughs> that you speak in your bedchamber. What you're speaking in secret, God just tells the man of God, and he knows where you're camping at. So the king of Syria said, go and find out where this, this man is. And they came and said, listen, he's in Dothan. He's, he's living there, or he's there now. So the king of Syria got his army and surrounded Dothan. Oh my, let me tell you, it doesn't matter how much the enemy surrounds us, as long as God surrounds us. Oh, hallelujah. So very early in the morning, uh, Elisha's servant gets up walks out of the tent, rubs uh, the sleepiness out of his eyes and begin to look around at a beautiful day. And all of a sudden he sees the enemy has surrounded them, uh, you know, uh, all around. And, uh, and the, this servant, like a lot of us, he just began to fall apart at the seams. Is there anything ever happened to you? You just fall apart at the seams? Sure they are. And he just began to wring his hands and says, Last master, what shall we do? What shall we do? What are we going to do now? And the man of God began to tell him, Don't be afraid. There's more on our side than on their side. And he walks over and prays a prayer and he says, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. All he was seeing was the enemy. Sometimes all we see is what the devil is doing. Oh, but there's a God that surrounds his people and he's not finished with us yet. And he's going to do what he wants to do. And he is who he says he is. So the man of God said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes. See, sometimes all we are seeing is in the natural. Oh, but there's a spiritual warfare that's always happening. 
Oh my, there's things that's going on that you and I don't really see. Oh glory, if you could see this morning with a spiritual eye in the spirit, oh glory, I could almost get happy. You would see angels up here around me. Oh glory, you would see angels walking back through the aisles and through the pews. There's more on our side than on their side. So uh, Elijah said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And when he opened his eyes, the mountains was full of horses and chariots of fire and angels. Glory surrounded, though the enemy is surrounded them. Let me tell you, there's a, a host of angels that has surrounded and I want to tell you something. I'm so thankful that, that we are surrounded by God. Oh, glory to God. Whether it's a church or an individual. The Bible says the angels of the Lord, they encamp around about them that fear him and delivers them. Don't be afraid of the enemy. Don't be worried about the enemy. Oh my, there's more on our side than there is on their side. God is with you. We are surrounded. Hallelujah. Well, let me tell you, is God, are you important to God that he would surround you with angels? Sure you are. Let me tell you, God sent a whole army of angels and chariots not for a city, not for a king or anybody like that, but he sent a whole army of horses and chariots of fire and angels just for one man. <laughs> oh, glory to God. If he will do that just for one man, what would he do for the church? He will utterly... Do great things. So we are surrounded by God. We belong to God. We're surrounded by Him. I want to read some out of, a, a, and this is a, is a favorite uh, passage of scriptures that always been my favorite. And uh, it's been favorites down through the years because men and women were encouraged by uh, God being with them and around them and knows about them. Sometimes uh, we feel like uh, we're beyond the reach of God. Let me tell you, there's nobody that's beyond the reach of God. <laughs> and uh, sometimes we feel like we're beyond his help. You ever feel that way that you was beyond the help of God? Let me tell you. No matter how hopeless it is or how helpless the situation is, we're not far from the help of the Lord God. We are surrounded by him. God is everywhere. Oh, glory. He fills the heavens. He fills the earth. There's not one spot in this universe that God is not there. Oh, glory, you can run as far as you can go. You can go to the deepest depths of the, of the jungles uh, of Africa or South America, the rainforest, where man has never been there. Whew. You'll find God there. He's there. Oh, glory. You can go to the depths of the sea and to the five miles down into the depths of the sea and you'll find God there. Everywhere. He's everywhere. Glory to God. So here in Psalms 139, listen to what David said uh, beginning at verse one. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. <laughs> he knows you. He searched you. <laughs> He's, 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 he's just uh, uh, infiltrated every part of your life and my life. 
It's just like he was been digging through us. There's not a cell in our body that God don't know. Oh, glory to God. And sometimes, Sherry, there's, there's cancer cells that invades our body. But let me tell you, from the very first moment that that one cancer cell, God is aware of it. <laughs> glory to God. God is aware of everything that's going on. Not even a hair of our head. Uh, uh, not one of them falls to the ground without... Uh, they're all numbered by God. Some of us, we lose our hair. I'm losing some. It, I didn't realize it till about a couple of years ago, and I looked at myself in the mirror with another mirror. And I thought, man, I'm, it's, 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 I see my, my scalp. But let me tell you, every hair of your head is all numbered. When one falls out, God just subtracts it from our record. He knows every one of them. Oh, my, my, my. So David said here, Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sittings. Oh, my. Every time you sit down, he sees it. He knows about it. Glory, when you sit down and tart, he knows you're tart and sitting down. Oh, glory. Every time you sit down, David said, he knows my down sittings and my uprising. Every time I get up, oh, glory to God. Let me tell you, he saw you this morning get out of bed. Oh, hallelujah. Every time you stand up, he knows that. Because we are surrounded by him. Thou knowest my down sittings and my uprising, and thou understands my thoughts afar off. Before you think it, he already knows about it. It's like, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I mentioned, I guess, his last weekend, something about the garden. Uh, weeds are all dead, right? Right now, they're dead. But I know <laughs> that when spring comes, there's going to be weeds out there. Well, that's the way God is with our thoughts. He understands our thoughts before they ever show up. Oh, my. Ain't that wonderful that God is so... Uh, all-knowing, uh, thou understands my thoughts afar uh, off, and thou compass my path. He surrounds our path and our lying down and are acquainted with all our ways. He compass our path. Everywhere we go, he's around us. He can pass our path. Every road we take, he's around that road. Glory to God. Oh, my, my. Let, let me tell you, God is good to us. And I believe that we need to pray every day. But let me tell you, there's a God that when we go on trips, he goes on trips with us. He's already there before we get there. My, my, my. Let me tell you, already there. Knows everything about us. And he's acquainted with all of our ways. Uh, I mean, he knows when, when we're acting right. <laughs> and he knows when we're not acting right. Because we are surrounded by him. And uh, the Bible says in verse 5, Thou hast beset me behind and before. He's in front of me and he's behind me. He's on my right. He's on my left. He's under my feet. He's over top of me. <laughs> Glory to God. 
He is, we are surrounded by him. And says he has laid thine hand upon us. How many is glad that the hand of God is upon you? Woo. If he would withdraw his hand from us, what would the enemy do? What would the devil do if he just withdrawed his hand for one moment? Let me tell you, but we are preserved. We are kept by his power. He's the one that's keeping us. He's the one that's helping us. So we are surrounded by God. David said, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Oh my, it's, it's, it's too great, too wonderful for me. Listen to what he said. Um, it's high. I know we, we, we can't think it, uh, everything about God, how big, how mighty, and how powerful, how all-knowing how loving, how kind, and how gentle. David said, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's high. I cannot attain it. Listen to what verse 7 says. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Whither shall I flee from thy presence. Where can you go to get away from his spirit? His spirit so fills the heavens and the earth. Uh, I'd like to say to lost folks, you can run as far as you want to run. You might think you're going to get away from God. You might think that you you can outrun him. But everywhere you go, trying to get away from church, trying to get away from God's presence, from God's voice, everywhere you go, when you get there, he's already there waiting for you just to stop where he could say something to you. So he said, whither shall I go from your spirit? And whither shall I flee from your presence? I preached a message one time in, in, the, in, in the jail. And the type, title of my message, that he's right here in this jail. And he was. Glory. And, I, and the title of my message, you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> Let me tell you. Oh, my, my. You can run as fast as you can go, but you can't outrun God. You can't hide from him. So whither shall I go from thy spirit? And whither shall I uh, flee from your presence? You, folks might as well as to give up to God. You might as well as to surrender. Glory to God. You'll run yourself to death <laughs> trying to get away from him and... and uh, you're just going to find it. I'm wore out spiritually because God will be there. And he's waiting on you. And He's uh, and the reason he, he is like that is because he loves you. It's not his will that anybody perish. If you're a sinner here this morning, if you're living in sin, you need to get saved. You need to give God your heart. You need to just step out from where you are and say, God, you, I'm just going to give my heart to you. So listen to what he said. Whither shall I go from thy spirit and whither shall I flee, flee from thy presence? Verse 8, if I ascend to heaven, you're there. Glory to God. And a lot of times that's what we're thinking. He's there. And if I make my bed in hell, behold, or look, thou art there. That word hell probably means the grave. 
darkness. He's there. Oh, glory to God. If I say, surely darkness shall cover me. Most, most crimes is done in the dark. Most sins are done in the dark. Folks wants to conceal it. They don't want to be known. And many times, they are not known to man. But listen to what he said. If I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. There's no place. God sees everything. Sees everything. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, if I get on the wings of the morning, the, the sun coming up and shooting out across the ocean, just in a moment, few moments of time, it shines plumb across. If I take the wings of, if you could go that fast, Bible says he's there. If I dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there thy hand shall lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Glory to God. Let me tell you. There's, there's things in the ocean that man not even seen. There's depths of it, uh, things in the bottom of the sea that they're discovering all the time. But God knew, knew about it. He put it there. Right. Glory. If I, even I, if I dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there thy hand shall hold me. You know, Jonah, uh, disobedient prophet, God said, I want you to go to Nineveh and cry against that city uh, <clears throat> because uh, their sins, they don't know their right hand from their left hand, and it was a, a wicked city. And uh, uh, Jonah got scared and went down to Joppa and uh, bought a fare on a boat and ran, sailed away from the presence of the Lord and... Uh, out there on that ship, the Bible says he went down into the bottom of the ship and fell asleep, a disobedient prophet, asleep on the cargo, and a great storm came up, you know, and uh, all those sailors began to cry out to their God. Somebody went down Sherry to in the boat in there, there that prophet was asleep. And, uh, and uh, they, they said, rise up, O sleeper. Uh, call upon your God. And they woke him up and they understood. They, they wanted uh, Jonah, where do you come from and where are you going? And he began to say, I'm trying to outrun God. <laughs> Glory, I'm trying to, I, got, I bought this uh, ticket and I'm heading away. God was wanting me to go there, but I'm, I'm heading that way. Oh, you can't outrun. Let me tell you, he can see in the storm wherever where you at to stop you in your tracks, my tracks. So, so they said uh, to Jonah, said, what, what must we do to that the storm will cease? He said, well, just throw me overboard. <laughs> Cast me into the sea and it'll be calm. And so they, 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 they didn't want to do that, but they finally ended up doing that. And when they throw Jonah over into the waters, the waves and the winds and the storm ceased. And Jonah began to sink down. Glory to God. But the Bible says God had prepared a great fish. He 
saw Jonah before he got on the boat. He knew what was in Jonah's mind. And he already had that. Uh, uh, Jesus said it was a whale. He already had that whale stationed there. <laughs> Glory to God. You wait right here. And uh, you might get breakfast. And when Jonah was thrown overboard, oh, glory to God, that whale just swallowed him whole. And uh, the Bible says that Jonah went down into the depths of the sea in the belly of that whale. Let me tell you, you're still surrounded by God. And uh, even the Bible says seaweeds <laughs> was wrapped around his head and uh, the scriptures talks about that he went to, down to the bottom of the mountains there must be mountains in the ocean and that wheel just floating around there oh glory to God surrounded we are surrounded by God and Jonah the Bible says out of the belly of hell Cried I, oh, glory, God, be merciful to me. I was trying to run from you, but I'm surrounded by you. I can't get away from you. Now here I am, oh, glory, and, and this filth in this bellies of this well sloshing around about me, those acids that's in that belly of that well is taking all the color out of my flesh. And let me tell you, all God did was just spoke to the whale. Glory to God. And the whale swims up to Nineveh. <laughs> Glory to God. Where Jonah was trying to flee from, swims up to Nineveh and vomits on dry land. Oh, glory to God. And Jonah was a sign to all the people of Nineveh. What kind of sign would that be? Let me tell you something. My pastor, Theo Carter, he said he probably looked purple and red and green of all those acids. And he began to preach Iran. Glory to God, but he surrounded me and he's brought me here to tell you that you need to repent, that you need to turn to God, that you need to give your heart back to him. Surrounded by him. Oh, let me, let me hurry up here just a little bit. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there thy hand shall lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say surely darkness shall cover me, even the night is light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, nor the night shine, nor, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both all alike to him. It don't get too dark. Oh my, your life might sometimes be dark. But it don't get too dark for God. He sees it all. Listen to what he says. Verse 13. For thou hast possessed my reins and hast covered me. In my mother's womb, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knows right well. How many is glad that God has surrounded you? Not one moment, and I mentioned here uh, Wednesday night that the Holy Ghost is about us. Not one moment are you by yourself, but he's with you, and he's ready to help you. When you're going through sorrows, Sister Sharon, he's there. Glory to God. Your sister that passed on this week, he was there. 
Glory to God. Just welcome her into his arms. Every trial you go through, he's there. Lean on him and let him be your strength. So this morning, we are surrounded by God. And I'm so thankful that he's with us and he's here to help us and he's here to strengthen us and he wants to touch you and be with you every day of your life. Let's everybody stand to our feet.